Hey everybody, I'm Wesley Willis and you're watching Discover Texas. Today we're going to go behind the scenes of the zoo and get to know a few of the dedicated employees who keep things running here and also get to make a few new friends like this guy. This is Diego. Let's get started. It's time to hit the road and discover Texas with Wesley Willis. Get ready to travel deep into the heart of the Lone Star State, meeting friendly folks and exploring fascinating places. Experience a way of life like nowhere else in the world as we uncover the rich history and culture of Texas. Discover adventure, discover excitement, discover Texas with Wesley Willis. Two hours from Houston, Austin, San Antonio, and Corpus Christi, on the banks of the Guadalupe River sits the city of Victoria, Texas. This town of 67,000 lays claim to the state's oldest deli, the Museum of the Coastal Bend, and the Texas Zoo. For six decades, animals of all shapes and sizes have come to call these three acres home. The Texas Zoo has seen its share of hard times. Most recently, it survived the wrath of Hurricane Harvey. But like every other hardship it's faced, the zoo has emerged stronger than ever with renewed purpose. That's mostly due to the men and women who work here and the dedication they have to the well-being of the animals in their care. Animal people are animal people. Mm -hmm. um, we all do it not for the money, but because we love working with animals and, and teaching people about the animals in our conservation efforts. Mm -hmm. My name is Jay Brooks Jensen, and I'm the curator of wildlife care here at Texas Zoo, Victoria, Texas. Mm -hmm. And what do your day-to-day -day duties include? Everything. <laughs> um, really, I'm in charge of the animals, so I make sure the animal exhibits are cleaned, uh, everybody's fed, uh, we're doing our training and are working towards our husbandry behaviors. And of course, it comes along with checking grounds and, and making sure everything runs operations. So you're basically like the jack of all trades. Now. Unfortunately. <laughs> I wish I was just playing with the animals all yeah. day. But. Well, um, what is one of your favorite things about the zoo? I think it's the, the, the smallness. Um, I love small facilities. I, I, I don't know what it is, but you walk in and there's a trainer you can talk to, a keeper you can talk to, a curator you can talk to. Mm -hmm. So you get your, your, your questions answered. It's like, you know, people want to know, what's his name? Or, or do you have this? And you're like, yeah, they're right there, but they're behind the, the bamboo. They're hiding because they're stalking you. Or mm -hmm. I like inter interacting with the people especially the little ones. Um, my whole career started because my parents took me to an aquarium when I was a kid. I was inspired and for the rest of my life I worked with animals. I came to Texas seven years ago, actually Texas State Aquarium brought me to Texas and my wife took over as executive director here and brought me in as curator 10 months ago. Mm -hmm. Has it changed a lot from when you first started to now? Radically, okay. um, because of the flood. So my name is Liz Jensen and I'm the executive director at the Texas Zoo. When I first got here, uh, the zoo had been devastated by Hurricane Harvey. Five feet of water came through the whole zoo and it was a mess. And so mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of work to be done. I came in six weeks after Harvey hit and I didn't know where to start. Our buildings were all completely gutted because we had to. And we have really had an interesting opportunity. Even though we had all this devastation, we were able to reinvent the zoo and the direction that we want to go in. So in a way, it was um, kind of a blessing in disguise. Thank you for the flood. Everybody's like, I'm so sorry about that, but we have brand new classrooms. We have a new administration building. We have a new hospital for our animals. Mm -hmm. We're redoing the exhibits. Um, so we now have expanded classroom spaces. Um, we want to really focus on creating a more robust education department and we're putting a really heavy emphasis also on conservation and conservation messaging. And so conservation messaging we think is one of our most important elements because why else are we here as a zoo? And one of the vehicles that we use is interactions. And so when you meet an animal like Nova or Bright Eyes or Tate or whomever, there's a connection that's made. And that connection is something that we feel is so important because we're hoping that people walk away inspired to want to make a positive change for the environment or for conservation. The Texas Zoo's interactions give the public a chance to spend some quality time and forge a lasting bond with the animals. It's a great way to get people personally involved with the zoo's conservation efforts. We decided to give it a try, and we started with this girl. 
Meet Nova, a Eurasian lynx. This medium-sized wildcat is playful, fast, and full of energy. And she's super friendly. Just, she's so beautiful looking. Oh, she's so gorgeous. Hello, gorgeous. Hello, babe. I know, you're such a good girl. Oh, boy. And I'm gonna try to back a good girl. Okay. <laughs> when they said they want people to get close with the animals, they weren't kidding around. <laughs> Holding her like this, I couldn't get over how incredibly soft her fur was. And her whiskers really tickle. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. Let's just put her down. Good girl. She is like, she's thing. like light, but like oh, kind of heavy. 30 pounds. We weigh her weekly so we can monitor her health and make sure she's good. And she's perfect right now. Hey, perfect. She when she's up? up to 65 pounds. <gasps> oh, jeez. Awesome. Whenever she circles you, she's looking to get behind you. She's sneaky. That was my fault. I should have been faster. You sneaky. It was hard keeping up with her. She had to burn off some energy before we could settle down with her. Oh, you're gonna get her. She took a <laughs> swipe at you. The last person that was only in the hospital a few weeks. No, I'm just kidding. In the 20s and the 30s, this cat was down to 700 animals left, individuals. In that entire range, 700. Wow. They're now up over 50,000. Mm -hmm. So that's a perfect example that we can take an animal breed them for release or use their genetics and do AV, artificial in insemination, to the wild populations to improve the genetics so that the genetic is, is strong mm -hmm. and the population will survive. So I think that's the best thing with her. When I Googled her to get information, first thing that came up, fur coats. Wow. Before I got a yeah. fact sheet on her habitat, her size, up came, oh, if you want a Eurasian lynx coat, it's only $4,000, buy now, click here. And I thought, that's horrible. So most animals we find, you know, it's habitat loss. We're overdeveloping wetlands and things like that. We need to protect those, like for the ocelot. Mm -hmm. With her, it's the fur trade. Um, but apparently Carrie has a mouse in her pocket or something. She probably put a piece Carrie's of chicken. Carrie's always had the animal She's touch. got a piece of fried chicken <laughs> in her pocket or something. She can run about 30 miles an hour. That's and that's, um, she can jump four times her height. Wow. So she can literally, and I'm working that to train, I'm going to use a bird lure and throw it up when we get her outside on stage to show how she can jump eight feet straight up and grab a bird out of the air. So she's a, a super She needs athlete. to join the NBA. She really is. A demonstration was in order. Come on, baby girl. There you go. Good girl. <laughs> they just have springs in the stuff. Oh, she can jump. Jay suggested I give it a go. Hold the camera. That's okay, it's all right. I'm <laughs> trying to get her so to vocalize cool. for you, actually. Okay, she thinks she's a oh Egyptian my queen. Oh, I hear her. <laughs> Good girl. Oh. She actually is, her great disposition, I think it's the species, because mm -hmm. I've got other lynx and they're just, they're my favorite. Mm -hmm. They're just mellow and sweet and loving. She's so observant. We have a Fitbit we put on her. So while we do this interaction, we monitor her heart, her um, body temp, and her respiration. What we want to do is improve the telemetry coloring of the ocelot by using her as an example of, look at all the data we can collect now. Instead of just GPS locations, we can tell a mm -hmm. lot more about them and get better baseline data. And we're working to improve those collars mm -hmm. for the wild population of ocelot. Oh, wow. So this links is actually helping the ocelot. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of that cool. Is, that is really neat. I got her to purr. She likes you. Pretty <laughs> girl. Now she wants you. It's because of the position you're in. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. She's not going to get you. I my hair. <laughs> She just likes the way you smell. Oh, good huh. All covered in food. Oh. <laughs> Not again. You might want to stand up. Yeah, good point. <laughs> well, they're, I mean, they're predators. Right. You know, by yep. nature. So they're going to She's learning how to kill when she does that. Yeah. That's one of the big mistakes a, a big cat trainer will make is they'll think it's cute when they're young. Mm -hmm. And she's 65 pounds. I mean, you look at her now, her forearms and her paws. Yeah. She's very, way more powerful than you think she is. Yeah. She is very, very strong. 
And um, when she's full grown, you won't be able to knock her, take her off as right. easy. Right, right. What a good girl. Oh, is she, are you done? Watch this, watch, she's gonna open the door. I'm out of here. Interaction's done. <laughs> that was 40 Interview minutes. Interview over. Promised her the Texas Zoo's animal interactions are a fun way to get people thinking about the world around them and about their role in helping to preserve it. To sign up for your own animal interactions, visit the Texas Zoo website at www.texaszoo.org.